Welcome to Backstage at the Enharmonic. I am your host, Sean J. Kennedy. To say I'm honored to welcome my next guest is truly an understatement. The gentleman is a legend and music royalty in my opinion. His name is Hal Blaine, drummer extraordinaire. He's best known for his work with a wrecking crew in California in the 1960s and 70s. He's played with a who's who of just about everyone you can name in the music business. Here's a quick list of some of the folks that this gentleman worked with and made hit records with. The Mamas and the Papas, The Birds, Johnny Rivers, The Association, Sonny and Cher, Frank Sinatra, Herb Albert and the Tijuana Brass, Nancy Sinatra, Jan and Dean, Elvis Presley. In fact, he played in most of Elvis's movies and did the soundtracks for them. He played with John Denver. He was a key component of Phil Spector's Wall of Sound production. They produced such hits as Be My Baby by the Ronettes and Da Do Run Run by the Crystals. He also recorded and performed with Simon and Garfunkel, The Carpenters, The Beach Boys, The Fifth Dimension, The Monkees, Steely Dan, and the list goes on and on and on. He played on 40 number one hit singles, 150 top 10 hits. Eight of the records he played on won Grammys for Record of the Year. By his own estimation, he's played on 35,000 recorded tracks of music without a doubt the most prolific drummer of the rock era. He is a member of the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, the Musicians Hall of Fame, the Percussive Arts Society Hall of Fame, and was inducted into the Modern Drummer Magazine Hall of Fame in 2010. To say that this gentleman influenced me also is an understatement. He played on most of the great television soundtracks that I listened to growing up, uh, The Monsters, Hawaii Five-O, Batman and so many hit records that I listened to as an up-and-coming drummer and still listen to today. I've been fortunate to meet Hal Blaine a few times in person, most notably at the NAMM show in California, and I was also afforded the opportunity to do some tech work at the Cutting Room in New York City for a Sticks and Skins event, and the guest of honor that night included Vic Firth, Joe Percaro, Bobby Mars, and Hal Blaine, and I was fortunate to sit backstage with all four of these gentlemen for about 15 or 20 minutes and the stories they told and the jokes they told to each other were memories I'll have for a lifetime. So without further ado, thank you Mr. Blaine for taking the time to do this podcast and here's the interview. Hello, Sam. Hey, how are you? Good, thank you. Thanks for taking some time with me. Sure. All of my listeners know, of course, I'm talking to the great Hal Blaine from The Wrecking Crew, 35,000 some odd recordings and number one hits all over the place. But today what I wanted to do was just ask you a quick question. If you could go back as far as possible, when you were a toddler maybe or a little kid, what was that first piece of music or artist or some person in your life that you said to yourself, music might be my thing? You know, I wish I could remember that that far back. <laughs> Uh, you know, we, I just turned in, I just turned eighty-seven years old. Mm -hmm. Now I wish I could answer that question. Uh, I just turned eighty-seven years old. I started fooling around with drums when I was probably uh, ten or eleven years old. I used to go over to the Catholic church and watch the kids at, I thought it was St. Michael's Brigade or something like that, and uh, they were real nice people, and they used to see me looking in the wall, looking through the gate sometime, and uh, a couple of the guys, or the priest or somebody invited me in to watch the guys marching, it was a, a drum and bugle type choir, uh -huh. and uh I just got hooked on the drum. I really loved the drum. And that sort of uh, headed me into the direction of the drums. And then when I was about, I don't know, 12 or 13, I guess, I my mother had an old rocking chair, and it, was a, it had the dowling in the back that ran from the seat up to the above the almost to the headrest and uh, I noticed that came off very easily and I was using the dowling 
from the from the uh, rocking chair, the back of the rocking chair. I was using the two center sticks as as drumsticks. <laughs> that's great. I had no idea. I didn't know what I was really what, what I was doing. But then, but that's really what kind of led me into. And then when I got back from Korea, I decided to take my GI Bill, and I studied with. It turned out uh, it was Gene Cooper's teacher, Roy Knapp who had the Roy Knapp School of Percussion in Chicago. And I, you know, studied there for three years, graduated, came back to LA, and I guess the rest is history. Wow, that's really awesome. I didn't know all that background. That's fascinating. Thanks for sharing that. I really like the sure. uh, the rocking chair part, too. That's hysterical. <laughs> to paraphrase Max Weinberg, you're at least five of my favorite drummers. I think Max said something like that. Are there any recordings out there that you listen to where you go, man, I wish I was the drummer on that? Well, there are many, many, many records through the years that because I was listening to all of, my, all of the drummers and all the favorite. I, I, drew, I really grew up in the big band era. Mm -hmm. There was hardly a song I didn't know, and I used to hear Buddy Rich with various, you know, with Tommy Dorsey, with Harry James, and different wonderful drummers. That, that, uh, and Buddy became a friend of mine, actually hired me to, to do his daughter's vocal album, Kathy Rich, and uh, that's one of the best compliments I ever had was when uh, some of Buddy's friends said, how come you never played... Buddy was producing the album, and they asked him, how come you didn't want to play on your kid's album? And Buddy said, I wanted the best. <laughs> and that was, you know, you couldn't get a better compliment than that. Oh, sir. And I listened, there were so many, many records that I memorized. You know, as a kid, I could sit in the theater and watch a big band and just know that if the drummer had a heart attack, I could jump up and, and play the arrangement. I knew every song and most of the big bands that were popular of the day. That's great. Uh, are there any new artists out now? Do you listen to music uh, for fun now, a new artists, or are you just involved with your own projects? Well, it isn't that I'm involved with my own project uh, projects. You know, since I retired... I've been getting ill off and on, and that comes with old age. Can't help it, because I live good. I never did get into drugs. Uh, my only vice was smoking cigarettes during that era, and everybody smoked. The minute you joined the Army, they handed you a card of cigarettes. <laughs> and I was 16 years old when I joined the Army. So... Uh, I don't know. I was lucky, I guess, that I made it this far. But I loved music. I listened to everybody at the time. But once I got busy recording, I wasn't really listening to the radio very much because I didn't want to be uh, copying anybody. I wanted to do my own thing. And that's the way I worked. I mean, I, I kind of worked... You know, I worked as an actor for a while, and I worked with Walt Disney and a few very nice people, and I learned a little something about the movie business and the way actors worked, and a lot of the fine actors that I worked with used to be, they, were, they kind of call themselves method actors, and I kind of fell into that group or that category because I wanted to hear what a song was before I recorded it and that was what was my motivation you know if it was, I wanted to play for the kind of song it was and I knew I knew very early on that I was an accompanist I was never thought of as a star or wanted to be a star I never had the, the hands of, of a Gene Cooper or a Buddy Rich those guys were incredible, and all the Hollywood guys that I knew, Shelly Mann, all the great drummers, 
uh, Alvin Stoller, uh, 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 Mill Holland, all those great drivers. I just, I, I knew that I was an accompanist because everyone I ever worked with would say, God, you play so wonderful behind me. And then I, that's when I realized I was an accompanist. So that's what I tried to tell. I try, I learned very quickly that less is more. I didn't, you know, one good shot in the right place. Um, People have talked to me about, you know, like I did a, just about all of the Beach Boys records with Brian Wilson. And, and a lot of people talk about how loud it was that, uh, the song Wouldn't It Be Nice? It was just a great big smack of a, of a drum. And in one shot, and that kind of opened it up. And, and that's what, you know, I quickly learned that one good shot in the right place is worth a million, uh, 16th or 8th notes or 100th, you know, 24th, 16th notes. That's right. I can't even think right now. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's, that's awesome, man. And a valuable lesson to uh, a lot of young drummers that, you know, might fill it in too much. So it's a great lesson. Most of the guys realized that it was not only drums. I mean, guitar players learned that less was more bass players, everybody. Today, of course, it's everybody's trying to outdo each other. You listen to bass players and they're playing solos and, and uh, playing a million notes with their thumbs, with their fingers, with their popping. Uh, it's a whole other thing today. And it's a whole other genre. It's, it's, you know, we made records, but at least for my part, being an accompanist. And I felt that my, my drumsticks were like, they were kind of like paintbrushes. When I heard, heard a song, I, I, it, it led me to what I wanted to play, the various colors. And also as a youngster, I was lucky enough to attend, as a youngster, I was attending some, the high school I went to in Hartford, Connecticut, we were high school. They used, to have, they used to have field trips, and we would go to this big opera house uh, or civic center, whatever it was, and, we, and I saw many shows about about uh, million people that were sound effects people. And this is long before television. This was strictly radio. And I learned how guys made sounds with simple little things that sounded like rain falling or a fire going on or whatever. And uh, that's kind of the way I fashioned it. When I did recordings, that's the way I, I wanted to know what the song was, and that's what gave me the, the inspiration. Uh, that was my motivation, and, and that's what, the, what I learned from actors. Uh, I worked with Sal Minio, and I worked with Gil Burner, and I worked with some wonderful, wonderful people, and eventually even in television. So all of that, when you put it all together, that was really what my background was. So I became an accompanist, and I think that most songwriters used to come to, and wanted me because I could... I could uh, add things to the music that they loved, but I wasn't trying to, you know, drummers are all major show-offs, <laughs> and she wanted to be the guy on stage and uh, be the big guy that everybody was watching, and, and all of that changed. Although today, when you see a percussionist working with a drummer, he's got 10,000, what we used to call toys, and it's kind of ridiculous. <laughs> you know, every every word has a sound, has something. You got a red bing, bang, boom, click. It's ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, it can be crazy. <laughs> exactly. So, in an email we exchanged, you had mentioned something. You had a recording session coming up in L.A. Is that something you'd like to talk about, or is that... You know, it's something that I really can't talk about because it's very secret right now. Okay. And it has to do with Beach Boys music. Great. 
Well, it's something uh, me and all the rest of the fans will be excited to hear, I'm sure, whenever it's released. It's going to be fun. It's something, it's a project that the great pianist Don Randy is doing. Okay. Don Randy was the, one of the great piano players with the Wrecking Crew, you know, along with Leon Russell and all, and Larry Nectar and all those wonderful guys. And this is a, a kind of a secret project that's going on. And I think I'm going in there next Wednesday, I believe I'm going to L.A. Because I've been turning down work. I just, too early now, Sean, that's all there is to it. Yeah. And I, I also learned that going into these venues anywhere from 100 to 10,000 people, it's like being into a, into a human petri dish. <laughs> with people coughing and sneezing and wanting to take your picture and just, you know, put you in, can I put my arm around it? Can I kiss you on the cheek? All very innocently, but it's, there's nothing but germs out there. That's right. So I'm going through a couple of heavy duty uh, flu bugs, and the doctors have convinced me that that's what it is. Okay. Well, I'd sure love to be a fly on the wall at that Beach Boys thing, but uh, I look forward to the recording and uh, finding out more about that. Oh, and it, oh absolutely. It's, you know, anytime you need some info, give me an order. Awesome. Thanks so much, Hal, and thanks for taking the time and for the... Uh, uh, it's a pleasure. Really a pleasure, Sean. Good luck with the project. Thank you so much. All righty. Okay, bye-bye. Bye-bye.